All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're about to begin. Good morning. I'm Supervisory Immigration Services Officer Richard Burmester, and on behalf of the Department of Homeland Security and the United States Citizenship and Immigration Services, I'd like to welcome all of you to your naturalization ceremony. At this time, I'd like to recognize a few special guests that we have today. Dallas County Commissioner Dr. Elba Garcia, District 4, who will also be serving as our guest speaker. Mayor Pro Tem Chad West, District 1, Deputy Mayor Pro Tem Jaime Resendez, District 5, City Council Member Kara Mendelson, District 12, City Council Member Paul Ridley, District 14, Dallas Assistant City Manager Liz Sedeo Pereira, and Honorable Sarah R. Saldana, retired U.S. Attorney for the Northern District of Texas and Obama Administration Director of the United States Immigration and Customs. <laughs> this occasion is a defining moment in your life that you will not soon forget. It is a very special day for all of you, and we are all proud to be part of it. We know that for some of you, it has been a long and difficult journey to get where you are today. For some of you, it might have been easy, an easy decision to come to the United States because you already had family members living here to help you get started in your new country. While for others, the decision to come to the United States might have been very difficult because you were the first in your family to journey to the United States. Whatever the reason you had for applying for United States citizenship and whatever struggles you may have faced to be here today, I congratulate you and welcome you to your naturalization ceremony. At this time, if everyone will please stand for the presentation of colors followed by the national anthem.
All right, at this time, if everyone will please take a seat. And at this time, I'm going to call the countries and present the candidates for citizenship. So as I call your country of former nationality, please stand for a moment. Bangladesh. You can take a seat. Burma. Dominican Republic. Eritrea, <laughs> India, <laughs> Japan, <laughs> Liberia, <laughs> Mexico, Nepal, <laughs> Netherlands, <laughs> Pakistan, <laughs> Philippines, <laughs> South Africa, Syria, and Vietnam. Each of the candidates for citizenship has been examined by an Immigration Services Officer of the United States Citizenship and Immigration Services and has been found entitled under law to be naturalized. Each of the candidates has a required residence and physical presence within the jurisdiction of this district. Each of the candidates has established that during the statutory period required by law, he or she was of good moral character, attached to the principles of our Constitution, and well disposed of the good order and happiness of the United States. Each of the candidates, unless exempted by the law, has demonstrated an ability to read, write, and speak words in ordinary usage in the English language. In addition, each candidate has demonstrated his or her knowledge and understanding of the fundamentals of the history and of the principles and forms of government of the United States. Therefore, Section Chief Jill Ennis, is it is recommended that these candidates be admitted to United States citizenship, subject to taking the oath of allegiance to the United States. Thank you, Supervisor Burmester. Again, I, my name is Jill Ennis, and I'm a section chief at the United States Citizenship and Immigration Services Office, and I would like to welcome all of you to your naturalization ceremony today. Throughout our nation's history, men and women have come to the United States, taken the oath of allegiance to become naturalized citizens, and contributed greatly to their new communities and country. The oath of allegiance has led, Amer led to American citizenship for more than 220 years, and today you will become part of that history. So at this time, would all the candidates please rise and raise your right hand. And repeat after me. I hereby declare on oath that I absolutely and entirely renounce and abjure all allegiance and fidelity to any foreign prince, potentate, state, or sovereignty, of whom or which I have heretofore been a subject or citizen that I will support and defend the Constitution and laws of the United States of America against all enemies, foreign and domestic, 
that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that I will bear arms on behalf of the United States when required by the law, that I will perform non-combatant service in the armed forces of the United States when required by the law, that I will perform work of national importance under civilian direction when required by the law, and that I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, so help me God. Congratulations. You're all citizens of the United States. At this time, I would like to ask for everyone to please rise as we say the Pledge of Allegiance to the, to the flag of the United States. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. At this time, I would like to introduce the keynote speaker uh, Ms. Dallas County Commissioner Elba Garcia. Good morning, buenos dias. Congratulations to all of you and thank you to all the elected officials that are here today, Honorable Narvaez, Resendez, Mendelssohn, Ridley. Please stand up, you know, and be recognized. Of course, Ms. <laughs> Ms. Liz Edillo Pereira and Honorable Saldana, it's always great to see you both. You know, uh, to the Naturalization and Immigration Service, thank you for the invitation. You all do the job that, you know, we're all very proud of. And I have to say that today is your day, and I want to congratulate you. My name is Dr. Elba Garcia. I'm Dallas County Commissioner for District 4, and I can understand how you're feeling today. 28 years ago, I was right here, you know, in this ceremony. And I have to say, at the time, it was like a mixed emotion. Part of me was so excited, and the other part of me was so nervous. But at the end of the day, I knew what it meant. It was to be, I was going to have the honor of being an American citizen. And uh, I have to say that as, as you all have studied uh, American uh, history, I have done already my test. I have learned my uh, elected officials. And of course, here I was, ready to be sworn. And I remember seeing all the faces as excited as I was because I have to learn English, I was ready to be the next generation of American citizens that was going to make the difference. And I know that all of us are here for different reasons. Some of you have probably run from oppression, some of you for jobs, some of you for family, some others people, you know, like me, by marriage. I was, I, I got to, to Dallas, but nevertheless, at the end of the day, we all here for one reason, and I think it's the most important reason, the opportunity, because we have the opportunity to change, you know, our families, the future of our children and the next generations, and more importantly, we are joining the American dream because this is what this country offers us, the American dream that is still alive and well. And of course, you know, in my case, uh, well, I came to, to Dallas because Prince Charming happened to be from a place called Oak Cliff <laughs> in Dallas. You know, and at the time I have just graduated from dental school in Mexico, and he had just graduated from law school here in Houston. So when he proposed, you know, we knew someone had to move, right? So being first, I say, hey, honey, why don't you move to Mexico? And he told me, Elba, in Mexico, there's a lot of Mexican lawyers, you know, millions of them. 
But if you come to Dallas, guess how many bilingual Latina dentists are right here? And of course, I'm talking, I'm, I'm telling this story 30 years later. You know, he said, you know, there's only a few. And your Spanish is pretty darn good. <laughs> you know, so, hey, not knowing too much, I say, Dallas, Texas, Oak Cliff, wherever you are, here I come. And I knew it was going to be hard because my English was good enough for, you know, go shopping, Big Mac, medium fries, small Coke. You know, <laughs> that was not going to take me very far. But nevertheless, I had the opportunity and I had the dream. And my dream was to become a dentist here in the United States. So I started where most of us started, and I know I'm preaching to the choir, at the Central College, right here a few blocks away, English 101. And I enrolled also in the dental assistant program. I figured that if I could not work as a dentist, I could work as a dental assistant, right? So here I was, you know, and I'm not gonna say because I know that you know how hard it is. I always say that until you know the language, you don't know the culture, and that is true. So it was very interesting the first few years to be in a conversation when you thought they were talking about food and they were talking about something completely different. You know, but little by little, I was able to pass all the tests that the dental college required for foreign dentists, and I was accepted at Baylor College of Dentistry. And well, after I got to Baylor, the rest is pretty much history. I graduated and, uh, and I was able to become a dentist right here as I always dream in the United States of America and start working with community dental care, which, was, which is still a group that does nonprofit for dental care. And as I start working in, with children, who takes the children to the dentist? moms and dads. So I start learning more and more about government, about how important it was to have uh, laws and ordinances that, you know, tell us what should we do in case of emergency, how to deal with the police department, with animal control, with the streets, with trash, with rec centers, etc., etc. So I'm start getting more and more curious about government. And eventually, after I left uh, community dental care and I opened my own practice, hey, I have people coming and asking me questions about government that I have to go and research. And it came to a point that, um, you know, people will call my office and say, hey, is my crown ready? Uh, well, I think we should have it next week. Oh, how about my complaint about the trash department? <laughs> you know, and it started to be known pretty quickly that Hey, it was just a matter of time as I get more and more involved with my church, with the Greater Dallas Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, someone say, you need to run for office. You know, we need someone that can go ahead and move some of the payments that we need in some of the small business enterprise office. So, hey, as I start thinking about running for office, because I have to tell you, if you ask me, I was going to be a dentist, and that was going to be the, you know, my main focus in life, my family, and of course my husband. So when I ask my, um, my kids, do you think I should run for office? They say, Mom, one of them, I still remind him that he is the one who told me to run for office. You know, he says, Mom, you love to complain, you will be perfect, <laughs> you know. So the rest is history. I ran for a city council and I love to be here in this building because it's really where things happen all the time. And um, well, we were able to do a lot of things that I'm very proud of. Not only about the Latino Cultural Senate, but ordinances that I'm not going to talk too much about it because I know here are the people that today represent you doing those changes. But um, I have to say that it was the opportunity. Every single time in my life when I have, been, when I, when I have done something that is important, not only to me, but as a community, the opportunity has been there. And this is what the American citizens give us. 
the opportunity to go to school, the opportunity to make changes, the opportunity to open a business, the opportunity to own your own house, the opportunity to run for office, the opportunity to make the next generations and this city and this state a better world. So after I left uh, City Hall, I was selected as a commissioner. Um, again, the opportunity presented, and yes, I have heard many times, but you're a woman, but you're a Latina, but you're a minority, but you are an immigrant, but you have an accent. I have an accent. Oh gosh, I never noticed that. I guess I don't hear myself. <laughs> but with that being said, what was the point that was there? Again, the opportunity. The working hard, which I know you know how to do, and more importantly, the perseverance to know that you can make it. And that is also opportunity. So what I want to leave you with today is that you have the power now as an American citizen to change things. You know, I encourage you today, you know, Mi Familia Vota is here, registered to vote. It's a non-parsing civic group, and of course, it is important that your voice is heard. And through your vote is where you can make that voice here. I always say, you know, that voting is the most important right that you have as an American citizen because it gives you the power to change things. And hey, su voto es su voz and your new country needs to hear your voice. You know, local government is very important. It's where what affects you every day happens. When you wake up in the morning, what's the first thing you do? Of course, brushing your teeth, right? So you open that faucet. What does that mean? Water, which is by the city. You go and pick up your newspaper, sidewalks, the city. You go to the rec center to work out, the city. You go to, you know, and you have an emergency, the city. You have to call the police, the city. Every single time, from the moment you're born until the moment you die, you know, the city and your county will be involved. When it comes about health, when it comes for the courts, when it comes to a lot of the secondary resources, the county is there. So local elections are very important for you to participate because it's where everything that affects your daily life, including the education of our kids, is local. And then, of course, you know, not only do we need your voice to be here, get involved. Um, and when people say, well, what do you mean, Dr. Garcia, by getting involved? Know your elected, office, your elected officials. Go to your town hall meetings. Tell them what you think. I mean, the best ideas that I heard always come from my constituents and, of course, my patients. You know, um, so be ready to volunteer. And it doesn't have to be in a political campaign. You can volunteer at your animal shelter, at your library. You can volunteer at the homeless shelter. There's so many opportunities for you to get involved and make a difference. You'll be amazed how much change one person can make when you get involved. And you know, this is what makes our country special. And through history, we have seen that our country renews itself through immigrants. The new voices, the new ideas, the new energy that makes and blend with our American culture. So, my friends, congratulations again. You have the opportunity because you are America's renewal of the future. So, muchísimas gracias. Felicidades otra vez. Thank you, Shay Shay, gracias. Thank you, County Commissioner Garcia, for your comments. Those were very, very uplifting. At this time, we are to the end of the ceremony, and on behalf of United States Citizenship and Immigration Services, my fellow American citizens, it's nice to say that again, congratulations.
As Americans, we are not united by background, race, or religion, but rather by our common citizenship, which is based on democratic ideals, equal and individual rights, and shared responsibilities. Upon taking the oath of allegiance, you have joined a long legacy of Americans who have contributed to the vibrancy and success of this country. As you are now part of this special legacy, I encourage you to use your talents and skills each day to build a stronger and brighter America for all here today and for the future generations to come. Along with all the rights you now have comes the responsibilities of citizenship. Embrace your new responsibilities by making positive contributions to your community and to the nation. The United States welcomes you, and as fully vested members of this great nation, may you chart a successful path on your new journey as citizens of the United States of America. Again, congratulations. At this time, one of the most important parts of the day is your presentation of your certificates. All right, ladies and gentlemen, as I call your name, if you hear name or something similar to it, please come forward to receive your certificate and then shake hands with uh, the elected officials here. Jacqueline Campos. And then just take a seat back in your chair. Please come forward to receive your certificate. <laughs> Jessica Sama. Evangeline Dimitrio. Ada Stoll. Deng Dong T. Gwen. Claudia Valerio Guzman. Abhaley Mesfin Analim. Jose Castillo Zavala. Matish Johnny. Maria Vega. Karen Myber. Hotel Guadalupe Aguingaga. <laughs> Fatina El Sokol. <laughs> Safa El Sokol. Nasir Mahoud. Jose Soto Lara.
by Thresha. Kibo Terasaki. Rukaya El Aji. Libby Vargasi. David Guerrero. Rosa Hernandez Razo. Golem Maboub. Golem Mohammed. Futu Nir Hussein. Kunal Madnani. Javed Said. Said Nasser. Pili Marissa Velastros. And at this time, I'd like to introduce Christina De Silva for the closing remarks and adjournment. Thank you so much. First, I want to um, just say a few uh, thank yous. I want to say a huge thanks to United States Citizenship and Immigration Services um, for letting us collaborate to host this ceremony and celebrate our newest Dallas residents, US citizens. Um, so thank you so much. And also thank you so much to the city councilors. City Council Omar Navais was here earlier, Deputy Pro Tem uh, Jaime Resendez, City Councilor Carmen Dilson, and City Councilor Paul Ridley. Thank you so much for coming here and helping us elevate this opportunity. And also thank you so much, Sarah Saldana. Thank you so much for coming. Um, finally, I want to also say a huge thanks to all the city departments that came together to make this event happen. There were so many people behind the scenes helping with parking, helping with security. We also have some incredible welcoming task force members that stood up and helped with setting up and making sure that the space was comfortable and also making sure that everyone um, knew where to go. Um, we also, I also had a couple announcements. First, um, there are some light refreshments for you outside, just right on the table that you're all welcome to enjoy. And then also finally echoing what Commissioner Elbar Garcia mentioned, right outside these doors is where we're gonna be asking everyone to exit. There will be volunteers who will be helping, who are available to help you with getting registered to vote. Um, so I really highly recommend you have the opportunity starting now to become registered voters. So really want to encourage you all to get, get access to that. And then finally, I want to just say thank you so much to all the candidates here who became citizens. I want to remind you all, not only are you historic members of your family, but you're also historic members of our community, of our city. It's been 30 years since we've hosted a ceremony here. And this ceremony is actually going to be recorded in our archives forever, so your future generations will always be able to see the records, see you come up and receive your certificate of naturalization. So I just want to hope, I just hope that you remember that and hope that we stay connected with, um, with your city, Dallas government, um, so that we can, as Commissioner Elba Garcia mentioned, make our communities better. So thank you. And that concludes our ceremony.
Have a hand-cranked or battery-powered emergency